welcome to God's country right here on the Cinnabar. Got to pardon all the smoke. We're still having fires out here and we had another one blow up just the other day just south of us. It went to 85,000 acres and nothing flat. But we finally had our first decent rain of the season and pretty much stopped it in its tracks. But we're still dealing with the smoke. But today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to shoot some old lever action rifles. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. There's nothing different about that. Well, the difference is today we're going to be shooting these Whitney Kennedy rifles. And these things are a result of a collaboration between one of America's most famous early inventors, Eli Whitney, or actually in this case, Eli Whitney Jr., his son, and a Civil War photographer by the name of Andrew Burgess. Now you see, the Whitneyville Armory, started by Eli Whitney Sr., is one of the oldest gun manufacturers in the United States. They started clear back in the 1700s producing mostly um, military arms. But with the success of the Winchester lever actions, they wanted to get into lever action rifles um, in the late 1870s. So they, they collaborated with, with Andrew Burgess to start making what was initially called a Whitney Burgess rifle. Now this was the first successful repeating rifle in 4570, and we think a lot about the Marlin 1881 as being the earliest, but it was really the most, um, the earliest commercially successful one. These these Whitney Burgesses were in 4570. They were a repeater, but they didn't. They weren't very successful. There was only about 2,000 of them made. But then they they modified them. Um, a fellow by the name of Kennedy, whose name is on these, but it's actually primarily a Burgess design, um, changed these a little bit and and uh, modified them to take some different calibers and whatnot, and came that became this Whitney Kennedy rifle. Um, that did have a, a, a mediocre success for the Whitneyville Armory. There was about 23 or 24,000 of them made. Um, these that we have here today, we have a, a, an early version in 4440 that has the S lever, and then we have a, a much later model um, with the more um, conventional loop lever in 3840. This is a, a good friend of mine loaned this to me for, the, for this shoot today. He sent me some guns to work on and and uh, one or two of them just to have for videos. So we're gonna take advantage and, and shoot a couple of them today, these, these uh, Whitney Kennedys. Um, so we've got um, a moment here. We'll, we'll take a look at these, and then we're gonna, we're gonna uh, cycle them a couple of times, make sure everything's working properly, um, and then do a little shooting with them. Now, if you wanna learn more about these Whitney Kennedy uh, rifles, Ian McCollum over at Forgotten Weapons has a really good episode that talks a lot about their history and whatnot. Uh, I think he shows some that were in the Rock Island auction here a while back. So rather than us rehashing all that history stuff that, that Ian's already gone over, we're really more interested in shooting them. So let's get down to business. Okay, so here's a little closer look at these two rifles before we get to shooting them. This top one, of course, is that S lever, early 4440. Now these were serialized in a kind of an odd manner. The, the first of around 5,000 of them had their own serial number, and this one's in the 1900 serial number range, so it's one of the first 2,000 made. And then later on, after about 5,000, then they went with an alphabet, a letter, and one through 999. So this one is actually Q and in in the 600 range, so it's one of the the later models made. Um, this this 4440 is a, a round barreled version. The 3840 here is a octagon barrel. A little interesting in that they they start off round for about the first oh three quarters of an inch or so, and then go to octagon. I suppose that gives it a little more um, steel in the chamber there or around the chamber, which might have been kind of important because these things were chambered all the way from 3840 to the, the heavy 1876 calibers in, in the Winchester lineup, clear up to 5095. So um, it's kind of interesting that we would go all the way from 3840 to something as, as powerful as a 5095 in the, in the same uh, frame size. Um, other than that, they, they're, they're fairly standard. The big knock that I've always heard about these Whitney lever actions is the long lever stroke. You see, they've got a long throw. Um, I guess it would take a little getting used to. It, it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, you can see the kind of the same thing there. Um, but um, that that is the one one knock that I've heard about them. Other than that, to me, I've had one of these things apart, and 
they have a very strong action the internals are really heavy compared to the um the winchester um toggle link system that they were using at the time i think they're an improvement on the winchester toggle links to to be perfectly honest but they just never achieved the commercial success so let's uh put a, a few uh, uh cartridges in here and see how they how they uh cycle and and then we'll get to shooting them Okay, so we've very carefully laid out our 4440 ammo here with this 4440 rifle and our 3840 with our 3840 rifle. It'd be pretty embarrassing to get them mixed up. Now these these Whitney Kennedys and Burgesses, you have to open the action to load them, much like a, a Colt Lightning. We're going to put in, say we'll put in five in each of them and just make sure that they cycle properly. They're easy to load. Um, you know, you get some that really are kind of a pain to get through the loading gate and whatnot, but these don't seem to have that issue. Okay, so let's see how it cycles. Boy, yeah, it does have a long throw, but it's really smooth. Okay, so let's try out this 3840 now. Okay, so same thing. Wow, I really like the feel of those. That, that action, that cycling is just really, really smooth. Now I'm going to have to get down here and pick all these up and separate the 38 and 44 calibers. Huh? <laughs> okay, we're about ready to go shooting. Okay, so let's put a round through each one of these just to kind of see where they're hitting, make sure there aren't any issues we, we don't know about. And be nice to see them make a little round holes too. These both have typical black powder era bores. Um, they've got pretty pretty good rifling, but uh, there's there's a fair amount of pitting and corrosion. Okay, so we'll start with this 3840. Okay, so we're only about 25 yards off, but that was a inch high and right on for windage that's that baby sighted in now we'll try this 4440 okay hopefully it shoots as well Got a pretty solid trigger pull. Okay, so I can see from here that this one is not nearly as well sighted in. We're about three inches high and two to the left here. So I might play around with the sights just a little bit and then we'll take a few shots. Okay, so I got to admit I'm a little bit winded. I was getting the target set up out here and a coyote started yipping down here over the hill down to the base of this draw. So I loaded up that 3840 because it... Uh, Got on paper so good there to start with and went after him, but alas, I, I couldn't catch up with him. So uh, I thought that might make a, a good bonus footage, a little coyote hunt with a 135, 140-year-old rifle. Let's see, we'll put about five rounds in this 4440 and uh, just see if we can't hit a target with it. First shot was a clean miss. Let's just hit steel and see where we're at. Oh, that shot pretty high, it looks like. Okay. There we go. Okay, shoot right at the base of them. Oh, that worked. Oh, that's fun. Oh my goodness, shooting those old rifles. Now this 3840, um, I, I loaded her up with 10 rounds. I didn't know I might get into a whole pack of coyotes when I went down the hill there. So <laughs> we'll do a little more shooting with it. Hell, I brought a round, put one in the chamber. That wasn't very smart. Okay, we'll hit steel first. Uh-oh. 
And that one didn't eject quite all the way out. Oh, let's hit another jug. Oh, that did the job. Let's hit one of those jugs a little further out there. Oh, look at that cat blow off of that. Okay, we didn't quite kill that jug on the left up there, so. Oh, shot right through it. Doesn't have enough weight in it now. Okay, let's uh, let's try the steel again. <laughs> How about that jug way up the hill there? Oh, it wasn't very dramatic, but we put a hole in it. Well, we've still got at least one more. We'll hit some steel. Maybe we'll shoot low on that one up on top. There, that knocks it off. Uh-oh, we flipped her right upside down. And that was the last one anyway. So, boy, what a lot of fun shooting these old Whitney Kennedy rifles. Wow. They're really good shooters. And as I was saying before, this, this really smooth lever throw, even though it's a long lever throw, it's just really nice. I love it. I love it. Well, I'd really like to thank my friend, the good captain, for the loan of this uh, 3840 Whitney Kennedy rifle. What a great shooter. I sure wish I could have got on that coyote with it. We've been a little inconsistent with our episodes lately between all these fires and uh, trying to set up the gunsmith shop. And my wife went in for knee replacement surgery just a couple weeks ago, and she usually does the work of two men. So now I'm having to do the work of three. So um, we're a little overwhelmed right now. We've had several people sending us guns to, to work on. Uh, um, so being busy is not a bad thing. Uh, there's a whole lot worse things than, than being busy. But we'll soon have our, our website up while the wife's down with the... Uh, with their knee recovering she's been working on getting a website together so we'll have a lot more information out there out there about uh, gunsmithing and and this channel and whatnot sure appreciate everybody that follows along with us uh, um, you know like and subscribe and comment it, it it helps to make the channel successful and we we sure appreciate all your help with that until next time happy trails from the Cinnabar.